You go out and you find why not. There are a million no's, but all you need is one yes. You surround yourself with why not. Do you dare to stay out? Do you dare to go in? People are just like, why not? How much can you lose? Live a why not life, man. How much can you win? Hi, everybody. Welcome to another episode of The Ankle Cast. This is Big Anklevich here. And uh, yeah, I'm back. I know I promised last month that I would be more on time with this episode. I promised to get it out closer to the start of the of the month, and instead here it is almost the middle of the month before I'm finally getting around to it. But I have an excuse. You see, I actually recorded the ankle cast once before this month. I think it was last Friday I did it. And I sat here and I talked to myself my entire drive home, blah, blah, blah. And then when I hit stop on the uh, recorder, I looked at my microphone, which is uh, an external lav mic, and it has its own on-off switch, and I realized I had never switched that microphone on. And so I recorded 30 minutes of silence. Now, I know there's probably people out there that would prefer 30 minutes of silence to listening to one of my ankle casts, but I assume that those people probably already don't listen to the ankle cast, and so they won't be happy when they see all that silence arrive in their pod catcher. So, I decided I would re-record one that has actual talking on it. So here I am, talking. (laughs) Um... Yeah, you know, it's sad how many times that has happened to Rish and I over the years. How many times we've talked for an hour or more and then uh, only to discover that it wasn't recording uh, correctly. And yeah, then we have to redo it. And it's always so much harder to do it the second time around. But I'm hoping that doing it the second time around will be better because, hey, it's rehearsed. I rehearsed it one time. Um, so anyways, um, what's going on with my five-year plan? Uh, I've got a kind of a hitch in that giddy-up. Um, I started it out back in October, and I wrote really well for a couple of months, writing, you know, upwards of 10,000 words for several months in a row, but, uh, I think it was somewhere in the middle of December that some things were changed where I work and things are going differently and I've done a lot of that writing in those months during my lunch breaks but now I'm not even in the place where I used to spend my lunch break I'm not able to get at my computer and and so forth so that has become difficult um to, to do the writing during my lunch break. Basically, I was thinking that I need to come up with some kind of a new a new MO what is the word? MO MO, yeah, that's what it is. Modus operandi. A new way of doing things. Uh, SOP, Standard Operating Procedure for me writing. Um, I almost said MOS, which is kind of a jumble of both of those two. But uh, yeah, I need to come up with a new pattern, a new way, a new schedule, a new routine for getting the writing in because I'm not getting it in during my lunch anymore. Um, I don't know what it is. I just, I, I get too distracted and I'm doing too many things and then I look up and, I, and my lunch is passed. And yeah, I did manage to shovel in some food, but I didn't manage to uh, take the rest of my lunch break and actually write. I'm not sure the best way to go about it. What In the mornings is when I get up and try and exercise. Um, and even that is not necessarily a good time because my son has taken this week, he's decided that he, he wants to get up really early every day now. He used to sleep until 8, 
8.30, sometimes even almost 9, which is the time I'm supposed to leave with him. Um, but, uh, but now, out of the blue, he's getting up at 7 or even earlier, and my kids are bringing him downstairs to me while I'm walking on the treadmill saying, Hey, he woke up, and so I'll have to go and deal with him instead of being able to exercise. So, you know, switching exercising to writing time might not help any because I would be just as distracted and unable to write at that time. Um, doing it at night, sometimes that works, uh, sometimes it doesn't. Again, my son, the little one, is very... His sleep is not very regular yet. He's, he's, he sucks as far as sleeping goes. I'll just say that. All my other kids were way better. This kid, everything about his sleep sucks. Um, and so really often I'm up late with him trying to get him to sleep because he's had a late nap and he doesn't want to sleep when it's bedtime uh, and so on. And, and then also, I don't know, I'm not very good at writing at those times. It seems like lunch break is the best time. Um, maybe what I really need to do is just make it a thing that I make sure to get my 30 minutes in. I mean, I could become one of those people. Uh, there are those people that are just like, you know, oh, I haven't had my lunch break yet. I need my lunch break. And, and you know, they'll throw a fit if you ask them to do anything when it's their lunch break. I've never been one of those people. I don't throw a fit. Uh, when it's my lunch break and somebody asks me to do something, um, I usually manage to get in enough time that I figure I got my lunch break. And, you know, I never add it all up to know for sure or not. But maybe I just need to become that guy that's just, you know, this is my lunch break and I am, I am off the clock. Do not bother me. I'm doing something else. Um, I think the only way that would really work is if I was to go somewhere other than where I normally work. Go off far away. Um, maybe just go out and sit in my car or something. That would, that would work. I mean, I'd be away from where everybody is. It might be harder to write there. Uh, I do have a wireless keyboard that I can pair with my phone. I did that, uh... A little while ago I paired it up to my phone so I could in theory sit out my car type on a keyboard um, using the Google Docs program and type up stories uh, I did find a few years ago way back when I wrote uh, what was that story called the battle of the ideas I wrote that one all during my lunch breaks and I I did basically that. I was like, okay, I'm going to write and I'm going to do it. So I would go and hide uh, in an office that was for the sports guys. And they never showed up until later because they didn't have sports guys for the morning shows. They only had them in the afternoon. And so at my lunch break time around noon, they hadn't showed up yet. So I could go into their office and uh, type in there. And I think I wrote most of that story in the sports office, which was cool. Uh, there's no sports office anymore. They're just kind of in... It, we've got a new open uh, plan at, at where I work. So there's not a whole lot of offices with doors that you can shut and have privacy. Instead, it's everybody is sitting out in not even a cubicle, because at least a cubicle you have kind of walls... They're just desks out in the middle of the open. And uh, so there's no privacy. And people would bother me endlessly if I was trying to get my lunch in there. So if I wanted somewhere to go, I, I suppose I would have to hide out in uh, my car or somewhere like that. I'll have to think about it, see if there's any other place that I can go. But I don't think there is. All those places have been remodeled away. And so, yeah, I'd probably have to um, use my car. But I think I'm going to try and do that. I'm going to try and be 
that guy who complains when somebody interrupts him during his lunch. I'm going to be that guy who makes sure I'll set a freaking timer. Um, because where I work, you just fill out a timesheet with a pen. You don't have to uh, clock in and clock out on some time clock that, you know, stamps it or any of that kind of stuff. Um, so, yeah, I guess I'll just have to set a timer and just be like, okay, this is when I left. I will not come back until this time, and I will write while I'm doing it. Um... So yeah, I think I'm going to work on that. I'm going to work on making sure I get my 30 minutes. Um, I suppose I'm probably supposed to get 15-minute breaks as well, because I think that's the way that works. And in an eight-hour shift, you're supposed to get a half-hour break for lunch and then two 15-minute breaks in the middle of your four hours, your two sets of four hours also. But yeah, I don't know. Maybe I'll start thinking about worrying about getting those... Uh, after I worry about getting the lunch thing working. Uh, so anyways, yeah, that's, that's my new plan. I'm going to try and work on that this next week. Um, hopefully that works out. Because uh, seriously, yeah, my writing has just completely dropped off. And um, I'm not completely unexcited about writing, but... Usually being in the process of writing gets me more excited. You know, writing a story and working my way through a story, that's the fun part of writing. Um, that's the, the creation, you know, makes you feel good, gives you those endorphins or whatever it is, gets you excited. That's the best part. And, um, yeah, once I let that go, you kind of forget how great it is. If you go a few weeks without doing it, you know, it's easy to go forever without doing it, really. Uh, so i got to get back into that and get that need for that daily dose of the writing drug. Um, so I'll be working on that this upcoming few weeks. And this, this time around, hopefully, I will manage to get the next episode of the show out by very close to the 1st of March. Um, which is a little over two weeks away. So I'll have two weeks of being able to report on what I managed. Uh, I started writing a, sh a story uh, in January. I, I came up with the idea when I um, happened upon another bit of vomit from my cat on the carpet. Uh, the story is called That Damned Cat... And, yeah, it's a play on that darn cat, the Disney movie. Um, but it's also, yeah, I think it's going to be a little literal, that title as well. Maybe it's a cheesy pun. I don't know. I know that Rish hates puns, but then he uses puns too. So, you know, uh, doctor, heal thyself. Or, no, maybe that's not the right quote. I'm not sure what the quote is that I should be using there. But, uh, but yeah, puns are okay sometimes. Uh, but, yeah, it's about a guy who has a plan to uh, take care of his cat. But then his cat has a plan as well. Uh, it should be a short story. I've probably written at least half of it. I don't know. I think I'm at, like, 15, 16, 1,700 words or so on it. And I only was hoping that it would be two or 3,000, so hopefully uh, I don't have a ton left on it. I think 4,000 tops. Um, but yeah, I'll work on that one, see if I can have that one done this week. And then I'm going to get going again on Sunny and Gray. Because, yeah, me and Rich have been talking a lot about writing novels. Um, apparently novels sell way better than short fiction does or even uh, collections of short fiction people just don't dig on the short fiction as much as they do the novels they don't get into it um, so yeah I'm gonna, I'm gonna see what I can do to, uh, to write 
a novel. And it seems to me like basically you just, it's like writing several short stories. You just got to keep at it. You got to be consistent. Um, I managed to write my story called Do Over back in October and November, which was 25,000 words, which is pretty long. It's a novella. Um, and a, a novel, according to the Hugos, starts at 50,000 words and goes up from there. So I only needed to do twice what uh, I did with Do Over, and I have a novel. Um, and also, that was another thing, when, when Rish and I went to a, uh, a con just recently, we went to various writing panels, and somebody was talking about how that had become kind of the new thing. Uh, because basically, you know, you can charge, what, two ninety nine dollars for a short story that's 12,000 words long. But if you write a novel that's 120,000 words long, which is 10 times as long as the short story, you're not going to charge $29.99 for it. Because um, nobody's going to buy uh, an ebook that's $29.99. Uh, especially not from a first-time guy. But you can write shorter books, which apparently the, the, one of the writers called them commuter novels. Not sure exactly what that refers to, because it's not like you can read a novel during your commute, you're driving. But um, anyway, maybe you can read it on the plane while you commute to, while you travel somewhere else really quickly, because it's short. I don't know. But, but anyways, uh, yeah, commuter novels are like 50,000 to 70,000 words. And those are like the new cool thing because you can make, you can write more of them than you can gigantic tomes that are 120,000 words long. And then you can sell them for basically the same price as the gigantic tome. And uh, that way you can make twice as much money if you take that 120,000 word novel and split it in two, then you have two books that you can sell. So you make twice as much money, I guess. Um, so yeah, I'm shooting for getting a novel written this year. Uh, I think within three or four months I could do it if I just, you know, put my nose to the grindstone and actually worked on it day in and day out like I did with the stories that I wrote back in uh, October, November. Um, so that's what I'm going to start working on as soon as I finish writing That Damned Cat. Um, hilarity is not really going to ensue in that story or any of my stories. That's something that I need to work on too, I think, is the... Uh, I don't know why, but I have a kind of a bent for the tragic ending. Always including that kind of stuff and maybe it's something to do with short fiction but I don't think it's totally that I mean yes you can get away with it a lot easier having your main character eaten by a bear at the end of the story or or um, you know internally combust or something like that but uh, if you do a whole novel and it ends that way people tend to be upset and they don't like your story if it ends on a down note. Uh, so, not sure how to make that work. How I, I gotta, maybe it's an exercise that I need to work on for myself to see if I can take a story that I, I, I have a, a downer ending for and change it so that it has an upper ending. Because the Debbie Downer thing just doesn't sell as well. Um... I don't know. I'll have to try and work on that. Um, Sunny and Gray has kind of a downer ending too, which is is not good. Since that's my first novel, and it's only going to give people a bad taste. Although it probably won't really be my first novel. Like they say, your first novel always sucks. So, 
it'll probably suck and no one will ever see it except for those that read my blog which is no one uh, like two or three people um, so yeah I'm gonna I'm gonna work on that that's something I'm gonna work on too is getting rid of the downer in me work on you know helping my characters win the try fail cycle instead of failing and the end <laughs> uh, now another thing that's been going on since 2015 began uh, I reached a level of fatness that was just out of control and when the new year came my wife was kind of excited about it too I was just trying to lose weight and get back into shape and be like I once was it was only last summer that I was jogging daily running all the time running six seven miles in a you know in one go and uh, I let that all go when I had some health issues and in so doing gained a lot of weight you know it's funny because I complained to Rish how I decided to uh, go without soda for a whole year and I figured you know oh, this is gonna do me a lot of good I'm gonna lose a lot of weight and then I'd gone without soda for a whole six months and I didn't lose any weight and I was so irritated and I finally said you know what I'm depriving myself of this thing that I enjoy and for nothing and so I started drinking soda again and then when I stopped exercising I found that well maybe I wasn't losing weight but I wasn't gaining it now I am and so I gained a ton of weight and um, I got into that contest with Clay Duggar on uh, Facebook F Clay Duggar was saying he was trying to lose the same amount of weight as me he was starting from basically the same point although I was like six or seven pounds heavier even than he was and uh, we both wanted to lose about the same amount so I said all right uh, maybe I should uh, maybe I should have a contest with you and Clay jumped on it and so yeah we started up that but another thing is that this guy at work and I kind of decided we would do a work-wide uh, weight loss contest everybody at work would be welcome to join up and compete and we'd all throw in like 20 25 bucks for it and then you know whoever got first place got half of the money and I think the other half would be split between the people who came in second and third um, and uh, yeah so that started up on February 1st and for some reason I was not excited about it I'd been spinning my wheels with clay as well for several weeks I lost a bunch like six or seven or eight pounds like right after New Year's and then I just kind of spun my wheels for uh, for the rest of January I would lose a few pounds then I'd gain them back then I'd lose them again then I'd gain them back then I'd lose them again and it was really frustrating and when February started I still was in that cycle and everybody you know that uh, contest started and I was just like man I don't care and I didn't try hard that first week and then the percentages came out there was the list of everybody who's in the contest and how much they had lost what percentage of their weight they had lost which is what the contest is based on and I looked at that and I saw that everybody was trying but me everybody had lost weight but me and I felt like a piece of crap I just thought man I have got to do something more I have got to get it together and I bit down and concentrated really hard I tried super hard you know last week it was kind of on and off I had a goal to get down to a certain weight and on Saturday I weighed myself and I was like within a pound of getting to that weight no that was Sunday sorry on Sunday I weighed myself and I was within a pound of getting there and uh, my 
my goal was to get there on Monday, so I had one day left, and I tried pretty hard. I freaking exercised like crazy. I have a little, uh, it's a jawbone up, and uh, what it does is it uh, counts your steps, and it uh, checks your, you know, it, it monitors your sleep for you as well. And so I was counting my steps. My goal was to get to 10,000, but I was like way exceeding that. On Saturday, I made it to like 14,000. On Sunday, I went all the way to 17,000. And I was just like, yes, I'm totally going to wake up Monday morning. And I've nailed that goal. I'm only a pound away. And when I woke up Monday morning, I was two pounds heavier. And I was so pissed. Um, and I don't know, I went out and like, ate a whole pizza or I don't know what I did I can't remember but I was irritated and then yeah that was when I went to work and found out that I was the only person who hadn't lost weight that first week I saw the percentages and I thought man I have really got to step it up I have got to drop sugar no more eating sugar no more touching anything like that and I've stuck to it. I worked really hard to not give in. There was a great deal of temptation that I uh, turned my nose up to this week. And I have lost like five pounds since Monday. I'm really excited. Friday's supposed to be my weigh-in day for this uh, contest. I'm, I'm down, since the contest began, I am down 1.4%, something like that. And... Um, and that, yeah, I've got a plan now set up and goals for each week that I'm going to get to. And uh, as long as everything works out, by May, when this contest ends, I expect to have lost 50%, sorry, <laughs> 15% of what I weigh right now, which should be enough to win the contest. I know that like three or four years ago we had a similar weight contest at work and I won the contest and I won it uh, at 13 something percent weight loss the next closest person was I think less than 10 percent so if I can keep it up then I will win and I will get I don't know 150 some odd bucks for doing it um but yeah, the, uh, the, the real thing is with, with weight loss, as well as with riding, as well as with everything else, is persistence. It's consistency. It's doing it again and again and again. You know, it's not likely that you're going to sit down and write a 100,000 word novel in a week. Or a 50,000 word novel in a, in a week, really. But... It is possible for you to sit down a week after week, day after day, writing a thousand words or 500 words a day. You'll get there. Slow and steady wins the race, says the uh, tortoise. The hare, you know, going in spits, fits and starts, spurts. Uh, you know, he always loses. So, and the real key is just being consistent. Um, I think I talked about that back in December. I had finished my month of November. My goal that month had been no zero word days. No days the entire month that I was going to let myself not write. And there were a few days where it was just like BS. I would sit down and write 20 words and then go to bed. Um, so I could say, wait, it wasn't zero, it was 20, which is, you know, sure, it's almost zero, but it's not and I thought that was dumb by the time I was over but somebody in the comments afterwards was saying that you know that's it's not dumb it's it's something that I need to do it keeps it on my mind even if I only write 20 words it's it's a habit and it's always there in my head and I can't forget about it if I go you know even five days in a row only getting 20 I'm still writing and I'm still thinking heck I gotta write. Um, whereas if I go five days in a row getting zero, I'm probably not thinking about writing at all. Uh, and so I think, and I won't do it this month because it's already half over, but uh, I think for March that's gonna be my goal again. I'm gonna go for no zero word days. 
I'm going to kick some butt. Even if it's 20 words, I'm going to think about writing every day. I'm going to be writing that novel. And, you know, if I just keep chipping at it, I will finish it. Um, So that's what I'm going to do. So, yeah, that's kind of my deal right now. Um, Another thing that I was thinking to go along with uh, losing weight, uh, I, I ran a half marathon two years ago which I was pretty proud of. Um, and that was before I let myself become very fat. Uh, now I'm very fat, but I'm hoping to lose weight. And I was thinking, what if I made that half marathon my goal? You see, I got an email from him just the other day where it said, hey, uh, registration is now open. You can sign up for the half marathon. And it was June 29th or what? It was the end of June that the uh, marathon was going, or the half marathon, sorry, was going to occur. And uh, really considering trying for it. Right now, I run no miles a day. I walk miles a day. I don't run at all. Um, right after getting the, uh, that email, I thought, man, maybe I'll go for it. And I ran for a couple of minutes, and instantly I started feeling uh, the shin splints pain that I used to get. Um, I think that mostly comes from the fact that I'm way fatter. And maybe I need to really wait for a few months until I lose some more weight before I can train more heavily towards doing this. But I'm still really pondering doing it. It's four months away. But if I keep to my schedule that I have set up for the weight loss contest, I should be much skinnier by the time that um, the half marathon comes around. Skinnier than I was the last time around that I ran it. I think I was like 265 or something like that the last time that I ran this half marathon. And I think I could be even skinnier than that uh, as long as I stick to my consistency of eating what I'm supposed to and not what I am not supposed to. I don't know. I guess if you listen to the show and you're a runner, tell me what you think. Is it stupid? Am I asking to injure myself by uh, trying to run a half marathon when I don't run at all right now? Is four months long enough to ramp up to, uh, to that level when I'm starting from haven't run for six months, I'm only walking now? Uh, or is it possible? Make a comment. Let me know what you think. Should I go for it? I'm thinking I should go for it, but I haven't put anything into practice yet. So, you know, we'll have to see. Uh, cool thing is that there's great weather suddenly. Well, not suddenly. I guess I should take that back. I don't know what's going on around here, but we're getting no winter where I live. It feels like winter in Sacramento, but I don't live in Sacramento anymore. I live where the winter sucks, but this year it doesn't. It's been super warm. It's nice. You can go outside at night. Like right now, it's almost 8 o'clock, 7.30 at night, and it's 55 degrees outside in February. That's 8 o'clock at night. Most Februarys, it doesn't even get to 55 degrees at the height of the day. And here it is, 7.30 at night, still 55 degrees. It was probably 65 earlier. I don't know, it's crazy. But that's awesome, because then I can go outside. I did that last weekend a ton. I was just like, man, this weather's so beautiful. I'm going outside, I'm walking, I walked. I made my kids go on a walk with me. I walked with my wife. I did all sorts of stuff outside, and it was awesome. And I plan on doing it again this week. So that's cool and yeah with great weather I can start training from for a half marathon right away I don't have to wait till the snow finally recedes I can just get out and take advantage of it um maybe I'll try jogging tomorrow I don't know I've been mostly using the treadmill just because I have uh, a tv set up right in front of it and I can just hop on hulu and watch I've been watching 
a bunch of old episodes of the community which i love that show so much it was so funny i never did see probably half of the episodes from the first season and so i'm going back and watching those i just finished the first season and i'm kind of starting into the second season seeing a few episodes that i'd seen before again and others that i'd never seen and uh um, getting the opportunity to see them and oh my gosh they're so funny Uh, I definitely recommend Community starting from the beginning though get on Hulu plus I think you have to get on Hulu plus to see the old episodes and watch those episodes from early on because they're they're great makes it you know walking not even uh, not even taxing in the least it doesn't even feel like I'm exercising feels like I'm just hanging out with friends (laughs) Um, anyways all right I'm gonna call it uh, quits here Um, we'll say that this has been uh, enough of an episode I've I've blabbered and I've jabbered and uh, and yeah I've told you what's going on with both my five-year plan and my new other stupid goals like losing weight stop being fat uh maybe run a marathon half marathon that is and uh yeah i'm excited about things which is good um especially excited about weight loss because that went really well this week and i wanted to keep going well i nailed my goal this week with the weight loss and uh, if I keep that up I'm going to win and my goals I set them all the way up until I reach my ultimate goal of weighing 200 pounds again Um, I haven't weighed 200 pounds since like my senior year in high school so uh, I'm going to work towards it and I'm going to get there I have the goals set up for the entire I should get there in September if I stick with my plan so we'll see how it goes and I'll report in again in two weeks as to how it went Um, and I will also report in as to how my writing every lunch break has gone Uh, so yeah look forward to that and uh, I'll talk to y'all later thanks for listening I'm Big Anklevich your mountain is waiting so get on your way Congratulations. Today is your day. You're off to great places. You're off and away. Your goal should be a dream with a deadline. That's why I gave you five years. You miss 100% of the shots you never take. Take the shot. There will always be things in the way you dream. You go out and you find why not. You surround yourself with why not. Live a why not life, man. There are a million no's, but all you need is one yes. Where we are today is where we are. Today's the starting day. I know what we're going to do today. And will you succeed? Yes, you will indeed. 98 and three quarters percent guaranteed. Dreams don't come true. Dreams are made true. Your mountain is waiting, so get on your way. Bye-bye, boys. Have fun storming the castle. Think it'll work? It would take a miracle. Bye-bye.